chapter deals with God, or Jesus, healing a deaf and a dumb man. And he, after he got done doing that, the Bible declares that the scribes and the Pharisees got together and looked at him and said that his, his deliverance or his healing dealt with Bezalel. And Jesus began to respond to them to let them know that how can a devil cast out a devil, paraphrase him. Not only he said that a house, he said that a house that's divided against itself cannot stand. And when I looked at this, praise God, in the deaf and dumb man that was here, there was an atmosphere, uh, and what was happening is the deaf and dumb man was conducive to what was going on around him. Right. Do you not know that sometimes if you give in to something, you, you become the product of the thing that's around you? Yeah. But God has called us to be climate shifters, right. atmosphere shifters. We have the ability to, to shift that through the power of God. And all the negativity that was hanging around these guys all this long time, Jesus came in there and healed uh, the, the deaf and dumb man. And because of that, the people that were so influenced by the atmosphere got upset. Is this, isn't this Mary, David, David uh, Mary's son, uh, Joseph's son? Uh, but then could it, this could not be uh, what's going on. He don't have the power to do that. He has to be a devil. Because that's what was in the atmosphere around him. And so many times in life, we get, we get attached to or we agree to what's going on around us. And really, it's not who you are. And a lot of times, you are not who you are when we, are, when we go, when we are adapt to something lower, uh, our family's <coughs> lower than what God has called us to be. Amen. God has never, he has never created junk. Amen. God has never created failure. Everything God created, praise God, was to win and, and to have a life and have life more abundantly. Amen. But what has to happen is, what is the atmosphere? We're going to talk about that in a few moments. As you get your Bible, let's read through, uh, chapter 12. In the book of uh, Matthew Gospel, chapter 12. And let's go where we says here. And Jesus knew their thought. Verse 25, after they said all these different things. But when the Pharisees, chapter 24, when the Pharisees heard it, they said, This fellow doeth not cast out devils, but by best of the prince of devils. And Jesus knew their thoughts and said to them, Every kingdom, kingdom that is divided against itself is brought to desolation. And every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. And if, if Satan cast out Satan, he is divided against himself. How should then this kingdom stand? Uh, this is something. And if, 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 and if I by Bezalel cast out devils, by whom do your children cast them out? Therefore, they should be your judges. But if I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God is common to you. Or uh, else how can one, this is the one verse I want to get to. Or uh, else how can one enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods, except he first bind the strong man, and then he shall spoil the house. It's all about the spiritual influence around us that gives us the ability to do what God has called us to do in the spirit, in the spirit realm. And when you think about spiritual atmosphere, spiritual atmosphere influences, it, it creates uh, a spiritual influence created atmosphere. I want you to write this down before I really get into my, my, my in-depth teaching. Spiritual atmosphere, oh, excuse me, spiritual influence creates atmosphere. I, I hope I can write it, type that up before. Atmosphere sustained creates climate. Climate sustained creates stronghold. Stronghold sustain determine culture. And for the next month, if God will allow us to, we're going to deal with those four things. Again, spiritual atmosphere create, excuse me, spiritual influence creates atmosphere. Atmosphere sustain creates climate. Climate sustain creates strongholds. Stronghold sustain determines a culture. Strongholds determine our culture. And I'm going to try to explain each and every one of these topics by Sundays that we talk about these things. But today we're going to speak on spiritual influence that creates an atmosphere. Whether that spirit is good or whether that spirit is bad, it creates an atmosphere. And in the midst of that atmosphere, are we strong enough to shift that atmosphere if it's not conducive to what God is saying? Or we, or do we want to fall back in the same atmosphere that has been created by the Spirit or something spiritual that's not coming out of God? Are y'all catching me so far? Now, when you think about this, when I define that word atmosphere, atmosphere is the blanket of gas on the surface of a planet 
or a cell life. The atmosphere of the Earth is, is roughly 80% nitrogen and 20% oxygen, which was a trace of other types of gases that flow in the Earth. And, and, and with that, I, I looked at that, without those uh, nitrogen and the oxygen, there is life. There, there, there could be no, nothing living on the Earth. No food, no humanity, no anything. So when you think about atmosphere, I looked at this very closely, atmosphere preserves life. Now, whether that's in the natural realm or the spiritual realm, say that with the atmosphere, atmosphere. It preserves, it preserves life. life. Okay? Why? Because we got without the nutrients or the oxygen, we couldn't live. Uh, without the sun shining like it's supposed to, things would not happen, the food wouldn't grow. Uh, so, in other words, in the natural, in the natural, if you remember last week, we talked about Nebuchadnezzar. And Nebuchadnezzar picked out the finest name that he could find, the one that has skills and science and the spiritual reality. And so we're going to use a little science, amen, and spiritual revelation to bring a point today. So if the earth in the natural realm cannot survive without an atmosphere, think about in the spirit realm. And again, spirit, spiritual influence creates atmosphere, whether that spirit is good or whether it's bad. I always like to dig down into certain things and what makes things tick. And I always, as a young boy, used to tear things up and put them back together. And when you think about the word of God and the action of people, when God said in his word that by the power of God, you have the power to overcome certain things. And then the body of Christ is not overcoming these things. And I begin to investigate why these things are not happening. You are a triune being. You are a spirit that possesses a soul and live in a body. The first part of you is spirit. Come on, somebody say spirit. spirit. And see, you can be influenced by other spirits, whether the spirits of evil or whether the spirits of God. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. One of, the, one of the things we have to understand is this is why things don't happen with us sometimes. We can come to church and praise God and magnify God, but sometimes it seems like nothing is happening. The, problem, the fact of the matter is, the enemy knows what it takes, amen, for us to make a connection with God, and he's a counterfeit. And it, and it is what atmosphere, what, what atmosphere are we in? Are we in an atmosphere where we can be could receive the blessings of the Lord? Or are we in a counterfeit atmosphere? Mm -hmm. All right. And you have the power, if it's counterfeit, to shift it. Come on, look at touch me and say, I have the power to shift it. In other words, you have the, you sound like you don't have nothing like you're dead. Come on, say, I have the power to shift it. I have the power to shift it. Again, with all this spiritual confess that going on here this morning, and where the choir was singing, Amen. I was down and out this morning physically, but Amen. When they start singing and glorifying God, I, I, you know what? I said, you know what? I'm gonna get into this. I couldn't stay where I was, but with all that power, I said, you know what? I'm gonna get into this. So then, I have the ability to move that, move myself into the atmosphere that's conducive to what God desires for me to have, or I can stay right where I am. Are you with me? So then, the key to the matter is, these disciples knew that there was a mighty miracle took place. The atmosphere was demonic because these guys were lame, lame and blind and couldn't see. And all of a sudden, Jesus came and he healed them. He, what he did, what did Jesus do? He shifted the atmosphere. Yes, yes. And because of that, the blind and the dumb began to walk our seat and talk. So in the midst of that, they, the Pharisees said, you know what? This, this is something happening. This, this got to be up the devil. Why? Because they wanted to have that same atmosphere there. But these guys that were, that were healed said, you know what? This is Jesus. I'm going to receive this thing, and I'm going to move forward. So then, if the atmosphere, amen, protects and preserves life in the natural, by the same token, the Spirit of God's atmosphere preserves life. Amen. The Bible says, Jesus said, I come that you may have life, and that more abundantly. It is what I agree with amen. that determines where I am in Christ. Yeah, it is what I attach myself to that determines what I am in Christ. But again, atmosphere, atmosphere, sustain life and protects life. Now, whether it's only in the spirit realm, but whether it's a good thing we're listening to or a bad thing we're listening to, we're going to live. Are you with me? I choose to be adapted to the atmosphere of God. Are you with me?